Thank you all very much. It's a real honor to be here today uh, for so many reasons, particularly because um, a lot of my training and experience started right here with the Society of Biology and Time. And it's nice to see the old faces in the room. Becky smiling over there, David and Freya, Cameron over there, and Penny, who also are So thank you all very much for bringing me along my journey to be receiving this award tonight. Um, right, so the other significant reason why I'm really pleased about this award tonight, um, October 2011, I published my first science themed blog post on my blog, which is still active science and more. Little did I know a few months later, it was going to cost me a PhD position. <laughs> now, why was that? How did through the interview at Imperial? Uh, the interview said to me, I noticed you write a blog, and I've been on your blog, and I read an article after which I'm not quite sure you're going to see it for the position. So what had I written about? <laughs> I was a recent, uh, recent, I just graduated from my master's, and I was at the crossroads, mainly because a lot of my colleagues who started doing science with have left their sector for a lot more of the creative industries. And I've written about how I was at the crossroads, whether I wanted to fully suit or I was going to stay in science. So fact four five years later, obviously I'm still in science, uh, receiving this award, and um, I'm now on a mission to try and drag up so many people along with me. So I've got that picture over there, and I think by the end of 2014, because it was the first time I ever attended the science fair, um, again, we're going to share with the science of biology. And um, during that same period, I signed, I signed up for STEM list to be a STEM ambassador, and as I went through, um, I took quite a lot of the activities that were coming through. I noticed a trend, and that influenced a lot of the subsequent activities that I got involved in. I've got that on there because so far it's the most challenging thing I've ever done. You've been running the room for so. Um, I had been bombarded with so many questions in a short space of time by students from all over the country. It was good fun though. So, the trend that I noticed was the lack of a women in the industry. B, the lack of diversity, more specifically for me, people from the black minority ethnic community. And thirdly, the difference they made when you went into schools and how it impacted the lessons and the feedback you got from the kids afterwards. It was very rewarding. Um, also, the community where I live, so I live in Essex, specifically Basildon, and I always have to travel to London to attend a science event. So there was um, a need to bring signs to my community. So moving on from that, um, Three years ago, I organised the first Big Biology Day Fair in Chelmsford. Um, David, <laughs> it was a very challenging experience because it was the first science fair that I organised. Um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but it turned out in the end I got a lot of support. Um, it all really went well. So the following year, we organised another one. However, what we noticed was that it was a science museum, so I thought perfect venue, but over the years, although it was a science museum, the venue was great, it wasn't accessible to a lot of people, so we weren't reaching as many of the communities that we wanted to reach. So what I tried to do this year is move away from Chelmsford and come back to Basildon where I live, and we tried to do a pop-up science in the town square, which went really well. Um, I'll go through the feedback and see how best we're going to improve that as well, because I believe there's always room for improvement. The other thing that I did, Again, to focus on diversity of the girls in the black minority ethnic community, um, to support other organisations who work with young girls. Mostly, I just go in talking about science careers. And within the community that I live in, well, I try to get the young people to come along with some of these science fairs. Like I showed you the first um, slide, I attended my first science fair in 2014 when I was 20 something years old. So I'm not trying to get a lot of these young people to experience some of these things earlier on, hopefully. Um, Quite the types of enthusiasm, enthusiasm for the sector. The other thing I do uh, is going into schools, which I really love, because you get to take fun photos like that like, and scan and lock codes. Um, so I go through from nursery schools to receptions, middle schools, uh, even sit formers, and um, just either supporting the science lessons, running activities, or again just talking the various science careers, um, trying to get them thinking about the university options, what they want to do and how, where they can do what they do. As I said before, feedback is always key, so as well the different events that I do organise, um, you always go back home and look through the reviews and see how best you can improve on the same services going forward. So finally, uh, for the main activity that won me the award, 
is um, two years ago, after attending a training day in the same building again, I left uh, ready to do something I've been wanting to do for a while, which was to set up Gene Scientific um, to take the training and experience I've gotten here to Ghana, where I'm originally from, to try and generate that mindset to try and engage young people in the public and getting researchers going out to the community to talk about their science work. So it's two years now. I did that together with my brother who now lives in Ghana as a scientist as well himself, so it's worked quite well having a support on the ground. So I'm just going to end with one of the projects that we're doing, which is the shape.